All right, going to show you from the Word of God that God hates the sin of interracial marriage. Going to show you that. If you have King James Bible, turn to Nehemiah chapter 13, start at verse 23. It says, In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod and of Ammon and of Moab, and their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God, saying, You shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him, who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even did even him did outlandish woman cause to sin. And it's referring to 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 to 8, where Solomon married wives of different kindreds, and they caused them to sin and worship false pagan gods. Paganism is a result of interracial marriage. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 27. Shall we then hearken unto you uh, to do this, sorry, to do all this great evil? Not good at reading on a computer. Look at this great evil. Um, to transgress against our God in marrying strange wives? I'm going to read this again for you. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil, to transgress against our God in marrying strange wives? Interracial marriage is a great evil, it's a transgression against God. Verse 28. And one of the sons of jo Joada, the son of Elashanib, Elash hope I'm saying that right, the high priest, was son-in-law in, in Sanballat, the Heronite, therefore I chased him from me. God hates it. God hates the sin of interracial marriage. And of course, this was dealing with Old Testament under the law. However, you know, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for instruction, for proof, for correction, paraphrasing, of course. That's first Timothy, sorry, second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen and seventeen. Okay? All scripture is unprofitable for it's profitable for proof for, for correction, for instruction, righteousness. Let me show you another good verse on that. First Corinthians chapter ten, verse eleven. Says now all these things which happen unto them are sorry, all these things happen to them for in samples, and therefore they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Okay? Another good verse, Romans fifteen four. For what several things were written aforetime were written for our learning, uh, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Okay? What was written back in Nehemiah 13 and other places in the Old Testament were written for our learning, written for our admonition, written for our instruction in righteousness. Obviously, they weren't written to us directly as Christians. They were dealing with Jews under the law, but they can be applicable for today for our instruction in righteousness and for our, our admonition. Okay, As per 1 Corinthians 10, 11 and Romans 15, 4 and first, or 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. I keep confusing with 1 Timothy. Um, it's applicable for today in terms of instruction and righteousness. God hates interracial marriage. And when you get into interracial marriage, all kinds of problems happen. When you mix cultures together, all kinds of problems happen. You see that over in Europe with the Islamic immigration over in Europe, destroying Germany, destroying France, destro destroying all these nations that let all these, these immigrants in from Islamic countries because you're mixing the culture together. You're not doing what God intended, which was to separate and set the bounds of the people. Let me show you the verse on that. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8. Right, I'll start at verse 7. It says, Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. He separated them. He divided them. He set the bounds of their habitation. You can see Genesis chapter 10 on that. Okay, Genesis chapter 10, particularly verses 1 through 5 and verses 26 to 32, talks about dividing the Gentiles, Okay, dividing the nations. Genesis chapter 11, verses 6 through 9, talks about how God scattered them abroad upon all, all the face of the earth. Again, paraphrasing, of course, but God hates interracial marriage. God hates it when the, the kindred start to mix and mingle together. He hates it. It's a very serious sin. And you see back in Nehemiah 13, verses 23 to 28, it's causing problems. It's causing, you know, they mentioned how King Solomon sinned in 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 to 8. 
It's a very wicked sin, interracial marriage. It's a very, it's a great transgress, an evil deed in the eyes of God. Okay, so don't get sucked into this thing of oh, it's it's okay to mix with kindreds and that kind of stuff. It's wicked. It's sinful. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.